which you actually did two, um, two of, well, three is kind of one, um, in bell work. And so when you're solving something like this, um, normally if you were solving by factoring, you would say, well, subtract the 36 and then figure out what's going on. And what they're doing here is they're just showing you these perfect squares and what they look like. So if you were to factor this left side, this left side is a perfect square. Well, how do I know? Well, this x squared is a perfect square. Square root of that is x. 25 is a perfect square. The square root of that is 5. If I multiply 5 and x and double it, I get my center. So I can look at this and say this is a perfect square trinomial. And the factoring of it would be x, we're always going to use whatever is there, plus the square root of this one, 5 squared. That's, that's what that's going to be, x plus 5 squared. x plus 5, x plus 5 is going to be x squared plus 10x plus 25. And so if I were to have something like this to solve it, I need to get rid of that square. How do, how do I get rid of a square in an equation? Yeah, so I take the square root of both sides, right? Well, because I have a variable involved, this left side is going to be x plus 5. But when you have a variable involved, what is the square root of 36? Six. Or? Six. Yeah, so this is going to be positive or negative 6. And so I have two possible answers here. The first answer is going to be what happens when I have x plus 5 equal to 6. And the second one is going to be what happens when I have x plus 5 equal to negative 6. All right? I subtract 5. x is going to equal 1 or negative 11. So this is solving a perfect square. When I have a perfect square, I don't have to like set it equal to zero and factor and try to solve, all right? What I can do is if I have a perfect square, I can just go ahead and do that perfect square and take the square to both sides. And so this is gonna work even if I don't have a perfect square on the other side. So even if that had not been 36, let's say it had been 37, what well, would have been positive or negative 37, square root of 37 minus five? because you can't combine those anyway, okay? And so when you have this perfect square, you can just factor it into that perfect square factoring and then take the square to both sides and you are good to solve at that point. So go ahead and try that check understanding one there. This is a perfect square. How should you have factored it? What does that factoring look like? X. Yeah, so it's X minus seven quantity squared equals 81. When you take the square root of both sides, you're going to get that x minus 7 equals what? Nine. Positive or negative 9, right? So then we're going to say x minus 7 equals 9. x minus 7 equals negative 9. When you add your 7 over, x is going to either equal 16 or negative 2. So when you are doing these, your first step is to take your b divided by 2. You're then going to square that. Negative 8 divided by 2 squared gives us 16. So 16 would be the answer that would complete this square. So go ahead and do the missing value here. And it can be a fraction. Just leave it in fraction form. Solve by completing the square. This is not a perfect square. X squared is a square, but five does not have a perfect square root. So really the best thing to do is to move five out of the way. All right, move him out of the way so that I have a blank there like I did when I was just trying to complete the square. All right, and so I'm gonna move him out of the way simply by subtracting him over. So I have X squared minus 12X plus, and I'm gonna complete the square here. And that whole thing is going to equal negative 5 for right now. All right, so I want a perfect square on the left-hand side so that I can just do that easy factoring, take the square to both sides, and solve. All right, but I have to figure out what completes the square. Well, how do I do that? Well, I'm going to take negative 12 and divide it by 2. What is negative 12 divided by 2? Negative 6, and I am going to square it. What is that? So I am going to add 36 to this left-hand side, but this is an equation. Can I just randomly add 36 to that left side? I can, but I have to do something else as well. What do I have to do? 
Yeah, so I have to add it over here as well to keep it actually balanced or it is no longer an equation, all right? So I complete the square on the left side, but I have to add that to the right side as well, all right? I want to factor this left side. Well, that's pretty easy because I just created it. My factoring is always going to be this x and whatever this b over 2 was. What was my b over 2? Negative, Negative 6. So it's going to be x minus 6 squared. That is always going to be my factoring over there. All right? The right-hand side. Well, the right-hand side is negative 5 plus 36. What is negative 5 plus 36? 31. 31. And then I'm going to solve. How do I solve? Well, I take the square root of both sides, right? Square root of the right, left side, square root of the right side. On the left, I have x minus 6. On the right side, 31 does not have a perfect root, nor can I simplify it. So it's just the positive and negative root of 31. That is my answer. Positive and negative root of 31. I need to solve for x, though. x is not by itself. How do I finish this out to solve for x? Just yeah, just add 6 to both sides. Now, 6 and the square root cannot combine. So you'll want to write the 6 first. Whatever you put over there, write it first so it, doesn't, so it looks a little bit more normal. Because really, you have 6 plus or minus the square root of 31. That's technically two answers. Six plus the square root of 31, six minus the square root of 31. That is my answer. I am done. Start by moving anything that is on the left side, your constant, move it over. Then you want to complete the square and make sure you add that to both sides. Factor and take the square root and then just solve for x by moving the number over. So go ahead and do check understanding three, a and b. Complex solutions. So, again, they want us to solve this by completing the square. Completing the square. All right, so we subtract 36 from both sides. 
All right, when we do that, we have our x squared minus 8x plus whatever we're going to complete, and we have minus 36. All right, now I'm going to take my negative 8, divide it by 2, right, which gives me what? Four. Negative 4, and then square it. So I'm going to add 16 to both sides. All right, now on the left, factoring is going to always be x minus what this was before I squared it, right? Right, the square root of this one. So the negative eight over two is what I'm always gonna put here to factor it. What's the negative eight over two? That was negative four. So I'm always gonna use that one before it was squared. That's my factoring. Over here, I have negative 36 plus 16. What is that? Yeah, so I have negative 20. And now I wanna take the square root of both sides. So on the left-hand side, I have x minus four. On the right-hand side, I have the positive or negative square root of negative 20. This is going to be a complex solution because negative 20 is negative and it's in a root, all right? So I'm gonna simplify my 20 just like I would using my factor tree here, right? So I'm gonna say, you know, two and 10, two and five, right? So this is gonna to factor to positive or negative two squared of five, right? Factor that, that comes out there. So I have x minus four equals positive or negative two squared of five. My final step, don't forget it, is to do what? Yeah, I have to add my four over. And yeah, what was this guy right here? Negative. Negative, so I need an i. And so I have x equals four plus or minus two i square root of so for a complex solution, you're going to factor it the same. Make sure you have your i, which represents your negative, and make sure you finally solve for that x by adding that 4 over. So go ahead. You don't have to worry about a graphing calculator. I'm not going to make you graph these. Solve for x squared plus 6x equals negative 34.